Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to solve a problem like this, where we're given one endpoint of a line segment, we're given the midpoint, and then we need to find the other endpoint somewhere out there in no man's land. Now, you might say, well, we have a midpoint formula, right? Let's just use the midpoint formula. Well, that's okay for some of us, okay? But there's a couple of problems involved with doing the midpoint formula. First of all, we already have the answer to the midpoint formula because we have the coordinates of the midpoint, okay? We can look on the graph here and we can see the coordinates of the midpoint. So what that's gonna have you do then is you're gonna have to set up two equations then in order to solve for an X and a Y value that are missing, which are gonna be the values of that other endpoint. It's gonna be the coordinates of that other endpoint. But then, not only are you gonna have to have two different equations to solve that problem, then you're gonna have to be comfortable in your algebra skills to be able to work backwards. You've got some denominators here, you're gonna to have to move a bunch of numbers around, and working backwards isn't always the best thing for some of us. So, let's do something different. I'm gonna show you a logical way to do this, and to show you an example of what we're gonna talk about here is, uh, what if I started at this side of the room, and I walked to the middle of the room, and I knew it took me 15 steps to get there. Well, if I'm at the middle of the room, how many more steps is it going to take me to get to the other side? Right, it's going to be 15 steps, because whatever it takes me to get to the middle is going to take me the same distance to go from the middle to the other side. And that's kind of what we're looking at here when we're dealing with on a graph. But the only difference is, is that we got two different coordinates, we got two different directions we're going. Because remember, you can't count diagonally on a graph. All you can do is go horizontally left to right, or vertically up and down, and you're using that to determine your movement then. Okay, so we can think of this this way then, kind of like we did the example with going across the room. Whatever it takes for us to get, whatever movement we, we do to get from one endpoint to the midpoint, we can just do the same exact thing from the midpoint to get to the other end. So if it's on a graph, all you have to do is count your spaces. I know that if I go two spaces to the right and I go up four spaces, I'll get to the midpoint between these two points, okay, from the uh, end point to the midpoint, I go over two and up four, and that means if I start from the midpoint and I go over two more and up four more, then I'm going to find the coordinates of my other endpoint. Okay, so when it's on a graph, it's pretty easy to do. Whatever steps it takes, just duplicate the steps. But what if it's not on a graph? And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to show you a little template that I use to solve these problems, which I think will help a lot of you out as well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start drawing these points side by side, okay? And then uh, where the first one represents the first endpoint, the middle one represents the midpoint, and then the third one is going to represent the last endpoint that we're looking for. And now that we've got everything side by side, we can start looking at the numbers and comparing what's happening between the two, and it's going to be much easier for us to see. So to uh, show you how this works, let's start with an example here where we're given a point A, we're given a midpoint, and we need to solve for B. So let's label all of our points here. We've got A, M, and B is the endpoint. I know A is at 6, 2. I know my midpoint is 9, negative 2. And since I have everything side by side here, I can start looking at these values and just see what is happening. Remember, when you're on a graph, for instance, uh, you're going to be adding and subtracting to move left and right, and you're going to be adding and subtracting to move up and down. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. So for instance, if we look at our X values, I know from six to nine, something had to change there. So what is that change? Well, we went from six to nine, that means we added something, and the difference there is three. So if I uh, add three to six to get to nine, well, then to go from that midpoint to the other endpoint, remember, I gotta do the same thing. So I'm gonna add three to that value, and that'll get me to my endpoint, which has an X value of 12. And now I can start looking at the Y values and do exactly the same thing. Whatever happens from the uh, first y value to the second y value, in this case we subtracted 4, uh, has to happen to go from the midpoint to the other endpoint. And so since we subtracted 4 the first time, we're going to subtract 4 from the midpoint value, and that'll give us a value of negative 6. So our endpoint then is at 12, negative 6. Pretty easy, huh?